The movie commences with a Hungarian man recounting an incident involving his granddaughter, a little girl in skiing attire, standing on a slope at the Black Ridge. A free rider accidentally collides with her, rendering the little girl unconscious. Strangely, the man who caused the accident, along with a companion, chooses not to assist the injured child, but instead leaves her there. Following this, the distressed mother repeatedly attempts to contact her daughter, receiving no response. Fast forward three years, we encounter Mia and Max, an American couple cruising along a road, marveling at the snow-capped mountains. They're enthusiastic about their snowboarding excursion at the Black Ridge in Georgia. Continuing their journey along winding roads, they finally arrive at their hotel. Inside the Georgia Ski Hotel, they encounter an enigmatic woman attired in black. During the check-in process, Max expresses their excitement about the holiday, especially their planned visit to the Black Ridge. The receptionist at the hotel informs them that the Black Ridge is forbidden due to numerous recent disappearances. Despite the warning, Max is determined to fulfill their dream of visiting the ridge as a couple and arranges for a helicopter trip. That night, they engage in heartfelt discussions about their future, contemplating marriage, before eventually drifting off to sleep. Later, Mia, unable to sleep, decides to take a stroll. As she opens the door, she encounters the receptionist, who offers her a bottle of wine as a gesture from the hotel. The receptionist, once again, strongly advises against visiting the Black Ridge, citing a recent incident where a husband went missing and was found dead five days later. Mia, feeling unsettled, declines the wine and retreats to her room. The receptionist marks a cross on her door before leaving, a detail that alarms Mia. When Mia informs Max about the cross, he checks outside, finding it mysteriously vanished. The next morning as they prepare to leave, Mia discovers a wedding ring in Max's bag sparking excitement as she anticipates a proposal during their trip. As they depart, an ambulance arrives at the hotel carrying the deceased man mentioned by the receptionist. Max and Mia inquire about the cause of death, but the coroner is baffled, describing the situation as peculiar and lacking clear explanation. After witnessing the dead body and feeling hesitant, Max convinces Mia to stick to their plan, assuring her that nothing bad will happen. Reluctantly, she follows Max up the mountain, where the helicopter is waiting. Even the pilot warns them about the dangers of the Black Ridge, but Max's determination overrides Mia's concerns. Max resorts to bribing the pilot to take them to the forbidden Black Ridge, and they board the helicopter. During the journey, Mia notices a large cross atop a hill, learning from the pilot that it was placed there in memory of a girl who died at that spot. Legend has it that her ghost haunts the mountain since her tragic passing. Once dropped off at the Black Ridge, they begin snowboarding down the steep slope, communicating via comms and seeming to enjoy their time. Unbeknownst to them, they pass by a buried dead body in the snow. Upon reaching the valley below, a thick fog envelops Mia, and she loses sight of Max. Suddenly, a snowmobile rider collides with her, rendering her unconscious. When she awakens, she desperately tries to reach Max through communication devices and his cell phone, but receives no response. Lost and alone, she continues on foot, searching for a signal to no avail. Hours pass as Mia trudges through the snow until she spots a snowboard track and a distant figure. She notices red roses planted on the ground near the figure, discovering it's Max, tied to a snowmobile that starts dragging him away. In distress, Mia chases after them, pleading for help but receiving none. Following the snowmobile's path, she finds specks of blood and spots a man on a jet ski in the distance. Demanding answers about Max's whereabouts, she's met with the sight of a ticking bomb in the rider's possession. Thinking fast, Mia straps on her snowboard just before the bomb explodes, triggering a massive avalanche. Unfortunately, the avalanche catches up, burying her alive. To compound the horror, the mysterious rider starts driving a pole into the ground, further adding to the danger and peril. In a desperate struggle, Mia, injured and barely conscious, screams before passing out from the lack of air. Summoning her last ounce of strength, she extends her hand out of the snow, and miraculously, someone assists her, dragging her through the snow to safety. The scene shifts to a lodge, where a man with a knife approaches Mia as she sleeps. Treating her shoulder wound, the man speaks to Mia in Hungarian, cautioning her against coming to this place. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, the receptionist appears distressed and engages in an ominous phone conversation, stating it's not the tourist's fault, and this cycle needs to end. She declares it's her last involvement. At a secret shelter, an old man reveals to Mia a picture of his granddaughter, the same little girl who died at the movie's beginning. Despite language barriers, he communicates that his granddaughter passed away three years ago playing a recording of her singing, Let It Snow. Moved by his story, Mia sympathizes, and they form an alliance to stop the snowmobile rider. Upon awakening the next morning, Mia explores the old man's dwelling but finds it empty. Venturing out further, she discovers a snowmobile along with Max's glove. Fearing that the old man is the snowmobile rider, she tries to escape using the snowmobile, taking essentials from the house, but none of the keys fit. Fortunately, a snowmobile driver arrives, displaying the correct key for the snowmobile Mia attempts to start before departing. Simultaneously, a search party arrives at Black Ridge to initiate a rescue operation. In a dire situation, Mia spends the following day walking in exhaustion, gradually losing strength. Weakened, she collapses on the ground, and on the third day stranded at the Black Ridge, she hears voices of a search party nearby. 
Sadly, they fail to notice her and continue their search, leaving Mia disheartened. Resuming her journey, she encounters a makeshift tent marked with stop, adorned with impaled baby dolls and Max's other glove. Entering the tent, she discovers walls covered in hundreds of black crosses and a shrine dedicated to the deceased little girl, accompanied by an array of knives. Further exploration leads her to find the old man restrained, bloodied, and urging her to flee. Spotting the enigmatic snowmobile rider entering the area, Mia runs for her life. As she flees, exhaustion overwhelms her, and she collapses in the snow, losing consciousness once more. Upon waking, she hears Max's voice calling through the comms, followed by the little girl's song. Despite attempting to communicate, Max remains silent, compelling Mia to continue her journey. Summoning every ounce of courage, Mia perseveres through the snow, resorting to eating snow for sustenance. Gazing at the engagement ring on her finger, a reminder of her acceptance of Max's proposal, she draws strength from its significance. Unfortunately, the snowmobile rider locates her, wielding an axe, initiating a terrifying pursuit. Racing for survival, she finds herself cornered at a cliff's edge, forcing her to leap off. Regaining consciousness later, Mia discovers herself near rocks and a stream of water. As Mia continues her journey along the river, she's startled by the sound of a snowmobile engine, creating a moment of panic. Struggling to cross the river, she finds the mysterious rider waiting on the opposite side. They engage in a tense standoff, Mia venting her frustration with a scream. Surprisingly, the rider backs off, leaving her alone. Exhausted, she treks until discovering a set of rundown buildings, settling down to rest. Pulling out a sandwich pilfered from the old man's place, she consumes it and later builds a fire to sleep beside. Her dreams drift to memories of Max and their aspirations for a family. Upon waking the next morning, she tries to communicate with Max via comms, but receives no response. Battling fatigue, she presses forward, relying solely on memories of Max to endure. Weakened and disoriented, she spots a distant figure and calls out Max's name in hope. As she approaches, she realizes it's just a snowman, but upon closer inspection, she notices a dead person inside. The snowman is composed of Max's lifeless body. Overwhelmed and heartbroken, Mia clings to him, feeling unable to live without the love of her life. In a heart-wrenching decision, she cradles the snowman that once was Max and throws herself over the cliff, choosing to end her life rather than face existence without him. In a surprising turn, the man in black observes Mia's tragic fall. Subsequently, the snowmobile rider heads towards a significant cross atop the hill engraved with Katie 2006 to 2017. The narrative shifts back in time to unveil Katie, the child from the film's outset, lying lifeless in the snow, surrounded by her grandfather, mother, and the mysterious receptionist, her aunt. The scene then returns to the present, unraveling the revelation that the man in black is, in fact, Katie's grieving mother. The voice of the grandfather echoes, stating the profound intensity of a heartbroken mother's revenge. The storyline revisits an earlier, happier time, showing Katie joyously singing, Let It Snow, while embracing her mother in a heartwarming scene. As the film nears its end, the camera descends the mountainside, revealing Mia's bloodied body amidst the snow. Surprisingly, Mia is not deceased. She manages to rise to her feet, appearing utterly devastated and disoriented, conveying a sense of profound loss and confusion.